please stand and see the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just was always given 
been always self-facing, always humble, and always worried about the kids in the district. And I want to thank you for your time, and I want to thank you for all the uh, expertise you gave me when we had to do um, the, the myriad of construction <laughs> issues uh, on all these schools and complexes that were built. You were always like having an expert witness on the board, and, and I don't know where I would have been without you. So thanks for everything, and thanks for your friendship. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words and friendship with all of you. I appreciate it all. As the, as the board president, you get to work with everybody here. We, we have a great board that we always have. Bill brings that integrity that you always search for in an individual. And, and I've always been, Bill's a very good friend. Uh, and I know this isn't the end for our friendship. This is just leaving the board. Uh, I will miss that integrity. And that's a great example for our student body. That's a great example for our staff. And I want to thank you very much for everything you brought to us. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Any other comments? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And that motion passes. Eight to one. Eight to one. Eight to one. <laughs> At this time, <laughs> I'd like to uh, make a motion on make a motion for number 160. This is the motion to amend the agenda for this evening. Second. We have a motion on the floor and second. Let's, let's Now this is a motion to amend the agenda. A motion to amend the agenda and add a resolution appointing Rhonda Lockman as school director of the Greater Latrobe School District to fill the vacancy resulting from William Palmer's resignation with the length of said term to be established in accordance with the Public School Code of 1949. This matter is de minimis in nature and does not involve the expenditure of funds or entering into a contract or agreement by the agency. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. I move for adoption of resol resolution number 161. And that is the motion to appoint Ron Dr. Rhonda Lachlan as school director of Greater Lake Trump School District to fill the vacancy resulting from Mr. William Palmer's resignation with the length of said term to be established in accordance with the public school code 1949. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any questions or comments? Mr. Nichols, can you explain how far that term will go? Yeah, in the uh, public school code, um, the I believe the uh, term will be to the first Monday in December after the next public election, which occurs greater than 60 days after the vacancy. So. <laughs> That's clear. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be, I believe, uh, the seven, the first uh, Monday in December of 2023. Mm -hmm. So two year term. Yes. yes. And and I, I would also point out that this is this is in accordance with the school code. The school code requires that in the event of a vacancy, the board of school directors has the first option. Uh, to a point, a point by a majority vote, in this case that would be five votes out of the remaining eight of you, uh, as Mr. Palmer has already resigned, um, five out of the remaining eight, it must be done within 30 days. If that is not completed, then um, the public, uh, 10 members of the public can petition the Court of Common Pleas to make the appointment for it. So that's the school code um, and those are the only ways that the school code allows for appointment. Any other questions or comments? 
We'll call roll we'll call vote. Mr. Kravsky. Mr. Merle D. Music? Yes. Mr. Rutko? No. Dr. Zorch? Yes. Mrs. Kozer? Yes. Mrs. Maines? Yes. Mr. McCommons? Yes. Mr. Merle L. Music? Yes. And Mr. Hauser? Yes. Seven. And that motion passes. Move on to the solicitor's report, Mr. Nichols. I have a report, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. Education and planning, Mrs. Maines. Yes, thank you. We'll begin with uh, having 
the previous year canceled. Um, Mr. Prep and I met, and we were talking about the potential for having some sort of camp for our students. Um, we really felt terrible about what had happened prior to that. So um, I had a conference with the head ranger at Heritage Reservation about the possibility of us having a day camp. We've never done that before. Um, once we found out that they were fine with that, then I got in touch with the elementary principals and the sixth grade teachers to see if there was any interest in doing that or if they just wanted to let it pass for another year. Um, we did have interest and then I reached out to Laurie, um, Dr. Nabrisco, to see if we were going to be able to do that under the COVID regulations that we had. And um, she said, if we can manage that, we'll do that. So the ball was rolling. Um, changing from a normal overnight camp to day camp was logistically a huge undertaking. Um, we had to decide what activities to keep at camp, what we might be able to do back at the schools to make up for things that we were missing, and what we would just have to let go of and, and not worry about it. Um, I needed to see if I was going to have enough staffing for the amount of students that were going to be there on the different days. We had to change busing. We had to change with um, the high school counselors. It was very different for the high school counselors as well to have to ride up and back on the bus with kids over and over again. Um, so I give them so much credit for doing that as well. So planning was going on, and then almost exactly a month later, I heard from Mr. Shibitz and Mrs. DeCastillo asking if we could have the seventh graders come to camp. And I will Freak, tell you that. Freaked out? No, I, oh. I, I was so happy to do that because when we had to cancel for them, these were the kids that missed camp completely. And I was a basket case about that. I, I cried over it. I cried over the counselors because they wait and wait for their chance to do that. And so I said, let's, let's do it. Let's make it happen. But now we have all three elementary schools blended into the seventh grade, and we didn't want to separate them. And I'm not sure if it was Matt or Lindsay or someone else, but they have a brilliant plan to use their ELA classes and bring them in their ELA classes. And it just worked out perfectly. So I was very thankful that we were able to do that. So we had the junior high students um, for five days after the sixth grade was finished. Um, I want to give a big shout out to our high school counselors who not only agreed to come day after day um, with the big change, but we had a lot of teachers that came with the seventh graders who had never been to the campgrounds before. And the campgrounds are huge. Um, and I was concerned about people getting lost. I walked around and I made a video, and we had stakes in the ground, and I was still worried about people um, not knowing where they were going. And our high school counselors came back, and they got permission to come back more days, and they really helped the teachers, and the teachers were so grateful for them not just for helping with the groups, which they had never done before as teachers of a camp, but for just making sure they didn't get lost on the campgrounds. So they were wonderful. And if any of them that were juniors are signing up this year, I can't wait to have them back. Um, so what we did was at, on the campgrounds of the Heritage Reservation, we decided that we were going to have archery, fishing, kayaking, the stream study because it's a great location for that and of course we kept the tie-dye because everybody wants to have their tie-dye shirt for camp. With our buses leaving at 7.30 in the morning to get the students up there and then we had to have lunch and we had to have dinner and get them back home, we really couldn't plan any more than five activities. But as we know, their camp is their camp. Kids go to camp once, and that's the camp that they know. And I think that they were all very excited to be there and um, had a great time. And um, it was challenging at lunch. One of the big things that we do at camp 
is we try to teach table manners and we try to teach how to set the table properly so that when these students go out of their house and out of the school cafeteria into the world, they have a pretty good idea of how to behave and how to set a table, and we couldn't do that. Because of COVID, um, we didn't want to serve family style. We didn't want other students handling the flatware and the plates and setting the tables and such. And the camp had a brand new food service. So I had to meet them and we had to talk about how they were going to provide food and we just decided to do everything cafeteria style. So then, and we had alternating tables and it sounds crazy, but it did work. So it was great. Um, so all in all, Mountain View um, was there first. They had 86 total students attend camp in two days. Bagley had 83 students that attended the camp and Lake Trobe Elementary had 91 students. So we had a total of 266 graders come to camp. And for the seventh graders, um, the, because they were with their ELA classes, it was anywhere from 44 to 56 students on any given day. And their total attendance over five days was 250 students. Um, when the sixth graders were on their off day, when they were not on the heritage reservation, the sixth grade teams in each building um, decided what they wanted to do back at the school, things that, activities that they knew the students were gonna be missing. When we're up there, it's not just, you know, archery and tie-dye. They do math lessons outdoors. They do graphing um, of different activities. They learn how to do some mapping. They do social studies. Um, they do another science lesson beyond the stream study. And the equipment that we did not take with us we worked out a schedule so that it would move from building to building so that when the sixth grade teachers were staying back or other teachers that had camp experience were staying back with the students, they would run the activities that best suited their facility and the spaces that they had, and some indoors and some outdoors. So um, I got some nice pictures from them. Somebody did a giant egg drop from a 10-foot ladder, which sounded like a really cool activity. Um, this year, we are planning for a regular camp and hoping that we can make that happen. Um, uh, at Mr. Karenka and I had a conversation at the camp last year and then again earlier in the school year about how great it was that we were able to pull that off for our kids and, and the things that we know that they missed. And we think that they're valuable things, um, you know, being at the campfire, having the um, Pennsylvania Game Commission come and do a presentation to them. Some of the activities, like the rifle range, we weren't able to do. Um, and it's a new rifle range, so we're looking forward to using that this year. So we are hoping that we're going to be able to have a normal camp this year. Um, I have teachers signing up, I have counselors signing up, and we're getting probably on par number of students signed up at this point. So hopefully it all works out. Um, again, I do deeply appreciate the support of the school board, um, not just for camp, but for everything, because I know everything you do isn't easy. I don't know everything you do, but I know it's not easy. And you are appreciated. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Mrs. Borio uh, emailed me a few weeks ago and she said, I'm not sure now that you're the superintendent, who I'm supposed to go to for camp related items. I said, just come to me. I believe in camp that much. I believe in that experience that much for our kids. Remember, any kid that wants to go to camp goes to camp. If you don't go to camp, it's because you choose not to or your family has a vacation plan and you can't go. It doesn't matter your, your physical limitations, it doesn't matter your, your financial limitations, you're going to camp if you want to go to camp. Um, I believe in what we do. Um, for her to add the seventh grade the way she did last year is remarkable. I mean, that's outside the box thinking. You guys 
just crushed it. And we had to have some experience for our children. And I'm hopeful that we can get the normal experience this year for our kids because I've, I've seen firsthand what it means to them. <coughs> I'm going to say the same thing that I've said to board members every year. If you want to go to camp, let me know. I'll pick you up. And I'll take you with me. You've got to deal with my driving and my music. Okay? <laughs> but I will take you to camp. And I've only ever had one board member take me up on that. And now he's an instructor at camp. And that's Mr. Music. Right? So, if. Wait. I've attended. No, I mean, he just didn't drive me. <laughs> no, I, had I, had the full experience. I had a two-year-old and a five-year-old, so we have a really good experience. <laughs> Not with me. <laughs> if I get you up there, you'll be instructing a station before you know it. It's not because of the music, singing with the music. It's, it might, might be the singing with the music. No, I'm not as good of a singer as Dr. Zorich, but I'm, I'm not too bad. Man. I just I just want to say one thing, Mrs. Borio. I, I think your efforts and everything that you have done to navigate through this tough times, the pandemic and everything, and making the experience for these kids possible. We want to thank you very much. Thank you. It's wonderful. We have kids who will transfer from one elementary school to another between fifth and sixth grade. And if their parents can swing the transportation for a year, we let them finish out at their old school. And one of the reasons that we do that is because sometimes the kids just want to go to sixth grade camp with their, their friend. Is that true, Mo? Mo? Huh? Is that true, Mo? <laughs> Wait for it. Did you enjoy camp? Yeah. Camp is a great experience. And it's like experiencing it from like a student and like even from a counselor level. It, it's a lot of fun and it's like it gives students an opportunity to get outside in nature and it's like explore different avenues of learning because not every student is fit to be in a classroom all day. Just to date us, Marvel and I were the first ones in the No, no comment. We better change it. No, we better talk more. One time at band camp, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Deer Valley? Would that have been Deer Valley? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Souls. Yeah. Yeah. souls. Really? Yeah. I know they did Deer Valley, right? For a couple of years? Yeah. 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 This is Van Chicken continue, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. On your agenda next week will be our resolution to approve the sixth grade camp programs and dates as listed on the agenda. Um, also on your agenda next week will be a resolution to approve two tuition students for the remainder of the 21-22 school year, both from River Valley School District. And um, also on your agenda will be um, a resolution to approve overnight and out-of-state field trips, future business leaders by America are going to Hershey, April 11th and 12th uh, of 2022. And with no cost to the students and two chaperones. And um, I first will move for adoption of uh, resolution 158 and turn it over to the for explanation. So move for adoption of resolution number 158 to approve the calendar revisions to the 21-22 school calendar. Start with. Uh, motion on the floor and second. second. Questions, questions or comments? Just real quickly, if I could, I just want to backtrack real quick. Uh, the FBLA uh, out, uh, overnight trip, they won a competition, so they're going to a, a championship. That's why that's there. Um, yeah, it's, it's terrific. Um, so I just that's why that one's being added now. Okay. With regard to uh, the next motion on the floor, approved calendar revisions to the 2021-22 school year. Um, we, had a, a, we had an old school snow day a few weeks ago. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any makeup days built into the calendar this year and oversight uh, on my part that I will correct for next year. However, that leaves us with um, a couple of options for making up that instructional day. Um, we could make it up on February the 18th and move our in-service day to January the 3rd. 
Um, or we could tack the instructional day. We could let our in-service day on February the 18th and move the in-service day to Jan or July, June the 3rd. I'm sorry, June the 3rd. Um, I I'm not in favor of adding an instructional page. What do you think? Are you in favor of adding a an instructional day on June the 3rd? Not so much. Okay, <laughs> not a lot. So, um, so that left me with doing the instructional day on February the 18th and moving the in-service to June the 3rd. However, we've got tens of thousands of dollars invested in in-service on February the 18th. Uh, presenters flying in, hotel rooms, etc. can't move it. So what I'm asking the board to do is let me put eight pounds in a five pound bag. Um, could we do in-service on February the 18th with an asynchronous instructional day? Our teachers will have office hours and touch base with our kids, but I would like to get both done on February the 18th. That is the uh, explanation behind the motion on the board. Thank you, Mr. Premka. Any questions or comments on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. Thank you. The next curriculum committee meeting will be held next Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022, at 5.30 p.m. And here in the city. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Banks. Finance on the agenda for your approval will be the Treasurer's report, the payment of bills, gifts, grants, and donations as listed. Also, approved disposal of sale, sale of property as listed uh, for your approval. Uh, our next finance committee meeting will be Tuesday, March 8th, in the uh, S Senior High School Library at 5:30 p.m. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Palmer. I'll take this one. Okay. Uh, facilities operation and planning. I'd like to uh, turn it over to Kurt, uh, who is going to go over the master plan vision presentation. Yes, tonight we have members from SHP Architects uh, who we hired this past November to do a district wide facility master plan and visioning process of our uh, facilities. Uh, they began this past month in uh, communications with members of our staff. I'm uh, here tonight to kind of give you an opening. Uh, presentation of uh, what the next year is going to look like for us. First of all, thank you all for the opportunity to work with you all and in the greater Latrobe community. Uh, it's our honor to take this very seriously, uh, the process of pulling the community together around an educationally driven facility master plan. I'm Todd Thackery, again, Vice President with SHP. And? Uh, my name's Josh Predovich. Uh, I'm an architect with SHP. I've been with the firm for about 21 years, most of it doing uh, just this type of work, working with school districts and master planning uh, and pulling together educational envisioning and facilities uh, improvements. Um, also listed up there, you'll see uh, Carrie Malatesta and Jeff Parker. Um, there are two of our other team members that are going to be intimately involved with your district. Um, their focus will be on the educational visioning side, uh, and then as we start to pull uh, facility assessment information and, and educational visioning together, um, they'll be uh, intimately involved in that process. What this is all about is developing a community-created plan, a plan that's educationally fantastic, financially responsible, and community supported. So the process that we are going to lay out for you tonight will do that for you and your community. And so um, what I'd like to do, so uh, Superintendent warned us that we had 20 minutes on the dock, uh, and if we went over that, then we'd get the name. Um, so <clears throat> um, we've got roughly about 20 slides to go through. Um, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk to you about uh, the, the first half of the process um, with the anticipation that we're going to be seeing you uh, more than a few times this year. Um, and so ultimately, uh, what we'd like to leave, with, uh, leave you with tonight is an understanding of really what's going to happen between now and May. Um, so the first thing that we've been developing is um, there will be a website that's going to be created um, that we've been working with your team on. Um, and you'll see that down there at the bottom, uh, futureglsd.com. Um, that website is under construction right now. Um, effectively, that website is going to act as our communication tool, which is going to have information about 
the facility assessments, the educational visioning process, and then ultimately the master planning process. So this will be a place where the community can go to see updates uh, as we work through uh, the overall process. And so as that uh, website starts to go live, we'll obviously bring that information back to the board so that uh, you can have a full understanding of what's going to be available there. Um, to talk about the process, each one of you should have a handout that shows uh, this master planning process as well as the schedule. Um, and so, uh, again, tonight we're not going to go through all, uh, effectively, all five of the steps. Um, our focus is really going to be to talk to you about the facility assessment uh, component, the educational visioning component, um, and then we'll leave the conversation about the vision, the vision test fit and the uh, master planning community advisory team uh, components and then the final master planning presentation to the board for uh, later presentations. Um, but understand that uh, we have a process in place that's been very successful in the past. Um, and what we uh, have really worked to do is understand how to uh, work with the school district to really um, make this process yours. Um, and really make it about your community, and make it about your schools and your staff, your students. Um, so in taking a look at the timeline, um, you can see that um, in the month of January and, and leading a little bit into February, we've already started the, the, the facility and site assessment uh, component of our process. Um, and the next step really would be um, this uh, next blue bar here is a community forum. Um, and that community forum has been scheduled. Um, we are looking at, um, and Kurt will correct me if I'm wrong, but we're looking at February 24th uh, at 6.30, and that's going to take place at the high school auditorium. And our goal at that time is going to be uh, to start this process and to alert the community to their opportunities of where they can plug in and have opportunities to provide input. Um, but what you'll see here is effectively the uh, durations of what we're anticipating as far as the educational visioning and then in that visioning test fit, uh, which is where we take the facility assessment information and what we learn in educational visioning about how you want to deliver education in the future and really apply it to your existing facilities. So that's the vision test fit. And then you see the uh, community advisory team master plan bar. Um, across the top, you'll see the district steering team, which is you know, that effectively is really the uh, group of facilities operation and planning team uh, that's already been meeting uh, on a regular basis. Um, and then also across the top in the July through the, through the November time period, you'll see the finance advisory team, which again, that would be Dan's group along with, you know, we're anticipating that that would also um, have uh, members, leadership from your school uh, authority. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're working toward building these teams together and, and starting to put these folks in place. Um, so that we can be successful in ultimately developing master plan options and making final recommendations. So what I'd like to do, I want to talk just briefly about uh, how we create these teams and who the members are on these teams. So I mentioned the district steering team and its uh, equation to the, the uh, planning committee that's already been developed. Um, so you can see the types of folks that uh, we typically uh, include in, in these types of, uh, of steering teams. Um, and there's opportunities for folks to come into that steering team as we start to get into more detail uh, on any of the one facilities or on any master plan option. Um, but ultimately our goal is to have a consistent sort of team meeting uh, on a regular basis throughout the entire process. And then again, obviously on the finance uh, advisory team is really uh, the folks that you would expect in looking at financial options and strategies. Um, thinking about uh, the multiple uh, different master planning concepts that uh, we might ultimately develop as a team and testing those um, and thinking about the long-term operations costs uh, and permanent improvement and project costs. So uh, and again, looking at the process, we're really going to focus on the, the first two. So the first one's that facility and site assessments. Um, and so that's been an, a process that we started. Um, effectively, we started at the, uh, the week that we came in to interview with you. We uh, took tours of your facilities, uh, had some opportunities to meet with some of your administrators at that point in time so that we could better understand um, you know, the mission that you were hiring uh, an architecture group to help you, uh, uh, you know, along this journey. Um, and so what we've been working on is to take all this information that Kurt has been developing uh, over the last couple of years and um, test that against what we understand in the market, uh, what we understand from school construction. Um, and, you know, the market right now is very volatile, and so we're uh, doing everything that we can to try and get the best handle on what costs we should be using as we start to uh, cost out any improvements or any maintenance uh, that's necessary under existing facilities. Um, you'll see, you know, this is also going to take in uh, looking at updated uh, enrollment projections, looking at student capacities, 
Um, and we've also started a process where we've been uh, effectively having one-on-one -on -one meetings with your school administrators uh, and your custodial maintenance staff, where we've got meetings scheduled with a uh, school resource officer, um, with the AD, with um, the technology, the student services. We're really trying to get a very broad understanding of, of what's going on in the facilities and what the type of, types of things that are um, out there that are going to affect uh, future improvements um, in delivery of education. So uh, we're really in that sort of information gathering uh, portion of the process. And that's what's going to lead us up to this first community forum. Um, our goal at that first forum is really going to be uh, welcoming the, the community into the process, explaining the process to them, similar to how I'm doing tonight, um, showing the community where they have the opportunities to engage in that process. So again, talking about the website, a place where they can go at any point in time to understand where the district is uh, in this year-long uh, process that we're developing. Um, we're going to talk about those conditions, uh, capacities, and enrollment. Um, so some of that information obviously has already been developed. Some of it still needs to be um, sort of uh, uh, vetted and, and uh, finalized, if you will. And then we'll be looking uh, to provide that opportunity for the community where they would uh, potentially be able to plug in, uh, either participating in educational visioning or community advisory team meetings or, or other forums. Um, so that's really the goal of the meeting on the 24th. Um, the next piece is really that educational visioning uh, component, which we really feel uh, is, is so important in this process to understand uh, what the future of education is going to look like in your district. You know, we typically talk about what's the next 10 years look like, what's the next 20 years look like. Um, and so we've got a process in place uh, that, um, it, that's been successful for us in the past in developing a couple of different types of teams. Um, the first team is really uh, an educational visioning team that uh, ultimately is going to be made up of two different groups. There's going to be a community group uh, and a student group, and they're going to meet roughly about five times, I think is what we've laid out. Um, and the idea is, is that we're going to bring the community group together, then we're going to bring the student group together, and then we're going to test concepts between the two. Um, and so our goal with that is really to try and understand uh, what's successful, what's working today, but also uh, what your students aren't seeing. What are the things that they aren't seeing in their daily education uh, that they uh, believe could be impactful as they start to think about their futures? Um, so you can see this information about, you know, sort of our goals of taking information, obviously, of what you've done to date, um, but then also looking at the, at the, at the goals of, of where you want to, uh, to be in the future. And so as we look at these two different groups, our community group is uh, typically made up of about 40 or 50 uh, community members. We've done them bigger, we've done them smaller as a sort of a target. Um, but um, we're really looking for a really uh, wide cross-section uh, of your community so that we can start to understand how the school district uh, education impacts your community, but also how your community impacts your education. Um, we typically hold those in the evenings. It's usually easier for the community members to be able to attend. Um, and we do a lot of table exercises. It's a lot of hands-on types of activities. It's not just uh, folks up in, in front of the room lecturing about what education is like. These are really uh, exercises that are um, developed in order to guide us towards uh, understanding what shifts uh, need to take place in order to get you from where you are today to where you want to be. And then the student group, um, I think we try to keep that group a little bit smaller and we typically try and engage uh, fifth grade through 12th grade students. Um, we typically at the end will do that obviously during the school day. So I think your lunch and learn uh, activities that might be a good time for those, um, uh, for those groups to take place. Um, and then again, same thing, we'll have a series of table exercises. It won't be uh, the same as what we do with the community group. They'll be a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging for the students. Um, and so um, you can see sort of some of the information of the, what we'll be trying to pull out of those groups. And as far as the, the, the way that the process is engaged, um, effectively, uh, we, we start by trying to understand where you are, um, then developing or finding where you want to be, and then sort of trying to understand how to conceptualize that. And so as you see these meetings sort of laid out, again, there's a series of four meetings uh, is what we're anticipating. And so at each time, our goal is going to be to come in and meet with the community group in the evening, and then meet with the student group the next day, uh, sort of lunchtime. And so we'll go through those exercises with each of the groups. And as we work our way through the steps, you know, again, our goal is to start to refine as we go forward. And then that fourth meeting is really uh, where we sort of consolidate all the information that we've learned and, and start to, um, you know, sort of graphically and, and um, verbally illustrate what the plan is, what the future uh, educational vision plan will be. 
And so the first meeting, again, we, uh, this one's really about where are we today, uh, what successes out there, opportunities. Um, there, this one, we're really asking for the district to sort of present uh, your current uh, educational vision um, and understand you know, what, what things are going right in the district, also understanding uh, what, where our areas or challenges and where, where, where can we do better. Um, and so that's the, you know, sort of the first meeting, and then we start to talk about that 10-year look ahead. Um, and then the student group will do something similar, right? Um, you know, district goals and strategies, so we're going to have that from the community meeting, and then we're going to try and test that against the students. You know, do they understand that this is where the, where the, where the school wants you to uh, be headed from an educational standpoint? Um, and so we'll, we'll work with them as well as what, what is 10 years ahead of the life. In the second group, so we'll take that information again as we take the community information to the students, we take the students' information back to the community group. And so we'll look at the student, uh, a student group work and then do a 10-year look ahead and we've got a series of exercises, uh, the, the start, stop, and keep exercise and then the what will we see exercise. So again, uh, table exercises where we engage smaller groups. Uh, and then student group two, we do something similar uh, with those folks and there's a couple other different activities with those uh, in, that, in that series. And then the third uh, and final group before we start to synthesize is the, the readout on the what will we see exercise, um, the visual vocabulary exercise, and then we have a very game that we play, it's called a, the, the space game, um, which ultimately is a, it's a game and ultimately developed in order to help folks understand facility needs uh, against the types of spaces that are necessary in order to make a facility successful. And so it's a, it's a fun activity where everybody gets a chance to, to ultimately uh, either develop a pod of a classroom wing or they could potentially develop an entire building if they choose to. Uh, but it's an exercise where everybody uh, has an opportunity to really understand that the, uh, the connection between uh, student groups, how many students are in a group in an educational setting against the size of a facility and what those relationships back and forth. Um, so we'll work with both teams on that type of, uh, of an exercise. And then the final uh, event, obviously, is, is a culminating event to, uh, you know, to sort of uh, respond out on all the things that we've learned. Uh, and this information is really what's going to go into the next phase, which we'll hope to share with you uh, probably closer to, uh, to the end of your school year. And so that's that vision test fit piece. Um, that'll be where we take the everything we learned in educational visioning, everything that we learned in the assessments, and we combine those two and try to apply that to how your facilities are currently meeting those goals uh, and how they are um, challenged by those goals as we think about the next 10 years. And then finally, um, we'll get into the master planning, which is really where we'll start to develop concepts. You know, the, everything in the, in the first three uh, components of our, of our process really are about gathering information so that we can really start to develop a successful master plan. Uh, and so uh, we'll talk to you about how we develop a, a community advisory team, what that looks like. Uh, again, another opportunity for the community to be involved in the process. Um, and then how we develop community master plans. Um, and uh, I think the main message that we want to leave you with today is, is that we're coming to you with, with open mind. Um, we really believe that there are a number of options that should be on the table for your district. Um, we've had an opportunity, obviously, to walk through your facilities, and we don't think that, um, that there's any one plan right now that really stands out as a, a clear path forward without going through this process to really investigate further. So that's going to be our goal as we work with you over the next year. And our ultimate goal is going to be come back to the board with a, a master plan recommendation. And obviously, um, we, we haven't probably highlighted it, but each of the board members obviously have different opportunities to be involved in this process throughout um, with each of the different groups. And so we're hoping to see each of you uh, in each of these different uh, facilitated sessions and, and talk with you further and get to know each one of you. So with that. So the visioning portion will take place this spring. The test fitting, we'll do that over the summer. Well, there's not a lot of staff here, and we'll work to see what the implications are of making those that educational vision work in your existing facility and what it costs so that we can turn this into numbers so that you can have fair, equal comparisons of all options as we go to master. Plan. And it's all about creating that educationally fantastic master plan that's financially responsible and that the community develops and supports. So that's where we're headed. Any questions?
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. As I've said to the board numerous times, I'm, I'm excited about this process. Um, we have a lot of decisions to make over the next several years here in the Greater Latrobe School District surrounding what our facilities look like and how they meet the educational needs of our students. And I'm, I'm excited to have a firm like SHP leading this process and laying that groundwork uh, for what the, the future holds for us. And I'm excited about a process that engages numerous stakeholders in this conversation. Um, not only our Board of Education, but, you know, the other community folks um, that we have out there, the organizations, from the Art Trust to the, the Partners in Education Foundation to, you know, our, uh, our, our business folks who know what they need to see from our students. Um, I, I sat through the presentation presentations from the groups that were looking to lead this process and yours by far was heads, heads and shoulders uh, above everyone else's and I appreciate your commitment to our school district and to our students. Thank you. Uh, our next facilities operation planning committee meeting will be Thursday, March 3rd at 3.30 p.m. at the Avenue Building. Moving on to student activities and recreation, Mr. Music.
um, and their parents are welcome to attend. So I wanted to make sure that that gets out there for all those, all those students and their parents. And that includes my parents. Uh, do you just want to move on to the board policy? There's our next board meetings. The policy meeting will be open. Thank you, Ms. Lisa. Technology. Uh, the on the agenda for your approval will be the uh, ERA Internet Agreement, and uh, our next technology committee meeting will be for the uh, superintendent's recommendations. Next week, I would ask the board to move on approved resignations. Jackie Callahan, who's a personal care assistant, Susanna Miller Volt, who is a classroom assistant, and Thomas Kennedy, who is our head boys soccer coach. <clears throat> I would also ask the board to approve professional personnel substitute teachers as listed. Um, and uh, also on the agenda next week will be a motion to approve the 2021-22 spring sports coaches and salaries. Uh, that will all be for next week. Uh, tonight I would ask the board to move on resolution number 159 to approve support personnel classified appointments and that would be for Dennis Pulaski to be hired as a uh, full-time custodian, uh, retroactive to January the 19th. So moved. Second. A motion on the floor and second. Questions or comments on motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes. <clears throat> Other business? Uh, I would just, uh, again, like to go back to earlier in the meeting, we made a change to the school calendar tonight which makes February the 18th both an in-service and an asynchronous instructional day. Um, so we will be doing both on the 18th to make up our uh, day that was lost. I believe it was uh, January the 28th. Um, so that will be a change to the school calendar. We will communicate that to parents tomorrow morning in a one call, uh, and we will post the updated school calendar on our website. Uh, you heard the gentleman here tonight from uh, SHP talking about our first community outreach forum relative to the master planning and visioning process. That is Thursday, February the 24th at 6.30 in the Senior High School Auditorium. Paige stole my thunder on the scheduling fair, which is also scheduled for the 24th, uh, but that's here in the CSC. Bye Bye Birdie, uh, the Grayland Latrobe Drama Club, our musical this year. If you are interested in tickets uh, as board members, please see Mrs. Borhoski. Uh, but that is coming up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 4th, 5th, and 6th. Um, and parent-teacher conferences, as we look out a little bit, parent-teacher conferences are scheduled for Thursday, March the 10th, from 5 to 8 p.m. Our board meetings are listed on the agenda as well. Reminder, we do not have a meeting next week. Um, I, Mrs. Pellis, and uh, Mr. Mings will be at the National Education Conference in Nashville. Um, learning about country music and education. We're going to see if we can get Mr. Maines in some cowboy boots while we're down there. He's got to come back to his you, you, But They don't make them that small. I mean that big. Sorry. Um, board meetings, uh, again, are listed. February 22nd will be our next board meeting. And then we have the board meetings listed in March as well. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I'd like to open the floor up to hearing visitors part two. If anyone here has any concerns in the district at all, you may stand up at the podium, state your name and address, and voice your concerns. Seeing no one, I move for adoption of resolution number 162. Second. A motion on the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 